Hello everyone. Welcome to Group 14 project and presentation titled as Capture of CO2 at Rawhide Plant using the Chemical Absorption Technology. The team members are Abdul Karim Al Zafiri, Abdul Rahman Al Abedi, Bassam Al Abad, Ali Bukhadar, and Aziza Zanedi. In this presentation, we're going to shed light on the following points, including some introduction to give an idea on what CO2 capture is about, the origin and motivation behind the CO2 capture technology chosen, market and competitive analysis, and we also are going to dig in depth into the monoethanolamine process, and then analyze the utility cost associated with the operation of this process, and last, we will wrap up everything and list the main ideas concluded from the project we are proposing. CO2 capture is focusing on the optimization of CO2 absorption using amine, mainly monoethanol amine MEA, in order to minimize the energy consumption of this very energy intensive process and improve the absorption efficiency. However, the main concern arises when thinking of the overall process, solvent production, solvent use and regeneration, and environmental effects related to its use and emissions. The regeneration of the solvent after the absorption is also an indirect source of CO2 related to the use of fuels, for example, combustion processes for energy supply. The evaluation of the overall balance of CO2 emitted and captured is essential to determine the efficiency of the process. The amounts of carbon dioxide that power plants emit have negative impacts that can possibly cause env environmental issues, increase the human health risk and agricultural losses. Biofuel and bioenergy systems play a huge role in displacing fossil fuels which has consequences when it comes to producing negative emissions through carbon capture and storage. Annual carbon dioxide emission from the power sector in the U.S. decreased almost 24% from 2000 to 2018. The reduction is mainly due to the shift from coal to natural gas. Gas-fired plants emit roughly half of the CO2 emitted by coal plants. An estimate of the CO2 emissions in the U.S. is considered to be around 43 gigaton of CO2 in 2018. A new study led by Colorado State University, which is considered one of the first studies to look at both current and future carbon negative biofuels, the study predicted significant benefits to the climate in general by the use of advanced biofuel technologies. This was done by comparing the carbon flow in biofuel system to those in grasslands and forests. The research showed promising indication of the strategies used for biofuels to have a net carbon benefit. The residents of northern Colorado rely heavily on the Boundary River Power Authority as a source for their electrical power. Almost half of the electricity Electricity in the facility is generated by the Rawhide Unit 1 coal-fired power plant, which operates on a 280-megawatt generator. As known, carbon dioxide has a high prevalence among many industries, making it an important reusable product through three main fields. First field is enhanced oil recovery. In this field, carbon dioxide is pumped into the rock formation to recover an additional 15 to 20 percent of the original oil as studies showed. And the second market is for fertilizer industry which uh, carbon dioxide would be produced in making urea and at the same time the production of urea requires the presence of carbon dioxide. Dedicated storage is another market which, where carbon dioxide would be injected to the ground into specific geological locations allowing it to rest for undetermined time to reuse it later in enhancing oil recovery. Studies and analyses predicted a large growth for all of these markets within next 10 years, which shows the economic importance of reusing carbon dioxide. And now with the competitive an analysis, the post-combustion carbon dioxide capture and storage has various advantages and a promising future. 
CCS concept helps limit the dangerous waste and, and take advantage of the abundancy of one of the greenhouse gases. Unlike some other competitive techniques, this technology utilizes a source that is widely abundant and can be theoretic, theoretically recycled. In addition, customers have, have diverse options when it comes to how and when carbon dioxide is being used. To illustrate, the CO2 captured in the process can be either transported immediately to manufacturers or stored underground for future uses. The feature is primarily used in the oil and gas industry. Carbon dioxide can be injected and deposited underground to boost the extraction volume. And re regarding climate change and health and safety benefits, in carbon dioxide capture, advanced technologies have been studied and validated to be employed commercially to reduce the amount of GHG emission, hence proposed climate stabilization. The big challenge that competitors face in the difficulty is the difficulty of reducing CO2 emissions while keeping up with the desired efficiency. On the other hand, when applied to the electricity industry, CCS cuts emissions and enhances efficiency simultaneously. Economy-wise, capture, CO2 capture technology would stimulate higher employment and economic growth. A huge number of individuals tend to be greener nowadays. Thus, sustainable projects are highly supported and appreciated. The carbon capture and storage enables the targeted industry operate in compliance with the net zero economy, reducing the operational costs associated with the CO2 emitted. The value and effects of CCS can be quantified. The total CO2 emitted in the US in 2018 was approximately 5.4 gigatons at $5 per ton on average, and that's excluding California, of course. Therefore, the approximate total cost of the amount of CO2 emitted was about $27 billion. The applications of CCS, which is carbon uh, capture and storage, would cut those costs by 80 to 90 percent, meaning the CO2 emission cost would have been about 5.4 billion instead of 27 billion dollars. This, this huge amount saved could be better invested in further projects or research. Production of monoethanol, I mean MEA, takes place by means the reaction between ammonia and water and ethylene oxide. So in this reaction, no catalyst is involved, and it is an exothermic reaction. The operating pressure was used from 50 to 70 parts to keep the ammonia in a liquid phase. The ammonia molecule can react with one, two, or three ethylene oxide molecules, leading to the formation of the monoethanol amine (MEA), diethanol amine (DEA), or triethanol amine (TEA), respectively. The combustion of the resulted mixture depends on the ratio of ammonia to the ethylene oxide and can be oriented to the production of the desired compound. The higher the proportion of the ammonia, the more monoethanol amine is formed. And those figures represent the MEA reactions. A small representation of the overall process was made using aspen, where flue gas stream is the main inlet of the carbon dioxide, and it contains other gases as well, such as nitrogen and oxygen. Then it goes through the absorber column, where carbon dioxide gets the chance to interact with both of MEA and amine. This reactor comes with a washing station, allowing more amine and water to be reused, achieving more efficient process. The rich solvent liquid then gets pumped through a heat exchanger allowing the liquid to get heated up so it travels from the bottom of the desorber column to the top. There is a boiler in the stripper column that is used to generate the stripping steam which is used in the column as part of the recovery process for carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide then goes through a partial condenser which is located above the desorber column to ensure a sufficient recovery of carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide would have a vapor phase resulted from the series of compression and storage. However, the condensate is used as washing water station where some of the usable water will get back in the column and the rest will leave the system as a waste. 
As shown in the model, there is a stream at the bottom of the desorber that, that's going towards the absorber column. This stream contains the amine loaded with acidic gases, which is regenerated in the, in the desorber column and it goes through the same heat exchanger, allowing the solution to cool down then used in the absorber column again. The recycled process of the condensate strip at the desorber column is used to maintain the consumption of a fresh water and improve the performance of the plant. And the, the CO2 capture process using monoethanolamine requires certain utility supplies that are essential for the operation of a high power plant. Electricity is a key element in the process and especially in the stripper columns and boilers. MEA is consumed, so it vaporizes and degrades through the chemical units chain. The desorber column bottom is generated by liquid vaporization as well as electrical heating that is accomplished using the electrical boiler. Just similar to any other power plant, Rawhide needs to replace the carbon beds every 3 to 6 months based on the operation intensity. Carbon consumption is expected to be approximately 0.075 kg per ton of CO2. Those carbon beds eliminate some of the undesired leftovers that MEA yields dur during this de degeneration. Moreover, water is fed to the system to build the desired cooling system. Water is also required not only as a fluid, but as a steam for the downstream compression unit that requires electricity too. Overall, the utility requirements of electricity, water, and steam are due to the complex chain of operational units the process consists of. And those units include cooling fans, turbines, pumps, and etc. The following table summarizes the utility demanded, power capacity, and energy requirements for our model that was built using Aspen. The operating costs of the CO2 chemisorption at Rawhide Cold Fire Power Plant was calculated using an Aspen model. So the total mass flow rate required to operate the plant was 293.7 in kilogram per hour for water and 12.5 kilogram per hour for the steam. For the electricity, the total duty demanded to generate the pump was approximately 0.035 kilowatt per hour. The total heating and cooling duties were also measured, so the value for the net, du net duty was determined too. The price was given, so the total price for the net duty was calculated given the formula net heating minus net cooling. Overall, the total annual operating cost was about 535.66 US dollars. The number for the operating cost seems very low because of many factors. One possible factor is that there are many costs associated with the operation that weren't put into account due to the lack of information, for example, labor costs and water or steam costs. At the end, the MEA method has proven to be successful in capturing CO2. Moreover, Aspen was a great tool that helped us with modeling the MEA method for capturing CO2 in the Rawhide power plant. However, Aspen had some constraints such as not supporting other CO2 capturing methods. For example, the aminosilicon method was a great choice for CO2 capture, but it was not supported by Aspen. Thus, we went with the MEA method for capturing CO2. As a result of the CO2 capture using MEA method, greenhouse gases emitted will be reduced. Moreover, the key factors that made the absorption energy efficient is choosing MEA as the solvent with the optimal combination of physical and thermal properties. And thank you for your attention. And if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to reach our team leader Bassam Al Abbad at the email shown in the slide. Thank you so much.